Bill is a 66-year-old accountant with a history of osteoarthritis of his knees. He's been on NSAIDs before, but does not like to take them because they upset his stomach. He's been using acetaminophen now, but notes that he's got very little benefit. In the past, he received a corticosteroid injection in both knees just about two months ago. And initially, they were helpful, but the benefit did not last. Bill's overweight and knows that's part of the issue. He's been playing golf over the weekend, and now his knees are really bothersome. They're swollen and painful. And on your exam, you notice he has an effusion. There's no signs of infection, no redness or anything otherwise that makes you worry. As you discuss treatment options with him, he asks you about some herbal treatments that his friends are taking. He tried glucosamine and chondroitin in the past, but found they didn't help. Is there anything else he can try to help deal with the osteoarthritis of his knee? Hi, this is Frank Domino, and joining me today to discuss the non-pharmacologic treatments for osteoarthritis of the knee is Dr. Alan Ehrlich, Associate Professor of Family Medicine and Community Health at the University of Massachusetts Medical School and Executive Editor of Dynamed. Hi, Alan. Hi, Frank. I'm, I'm glad uh, you named this patient Bill and not Frank, because Frank also <laughs> has osteoarthritis of the knees. Um, so let's begin with, with his question. What are effective, what are well-documented, effective non-pharmacologic treatments for osteoarthritis of the knee? Well, it's a great question, Frank, because the pharmacologic treatments do have limited efficacy. For NEOA, two effective interventions that would be relevant are muscle strengthening around the knee joint and weight loss. Th these should really be the cornerstone of treating knee osteoarthritis. Physical therapists can be helpful with designing a patient-specific plan that will include low-impact aerobics and range of motion. There have been a lot of other interventions that have been tried, such as ice or heat or knee braces, and they help some patients, but they, they all lack a strong evidence base. Some other interventions that have been tried include yoga, tai chi, massage, spa therapy, people go to mineral spas or they get mud packs or things like that. And, you know, again, all of these help some, but none are a surefire fix for everyone. So not surprisingly, uh, you know, a lot of patients, we live in a culture where people just want to take something and they look to herbal therapies and there have been a lot that have been tried. Probably the best well-known is glucosamine chondroitin. Uh, there was a lot of hype on this initially, but that really didn't pan out. And at this point, the American College of Rheumatology actually recommends against using it. Some other supplements that have been tried with varying degrees of success include uh, avocado soybean unsaponifiables, which is part uh, the, basically fats. There's a herb, Bastuilla serrata, rose hips, ginger. There's really uh, a number of them, um, but probably the one supplement that really has actually had a significant amount of research backing it up is curcumin. And this is extracted from the herb turmeric. If you, if you like curry, turmeric is a key ingredient in curry. And curcumin is known to have anti-inflammatory properties, which is probably uh, underlying why people are interested in it and uh, why it may have some significant benefits. Okay, so I, I was one of those folks who, who tried the glucosamine chondroitin and even wrote about it and was fairly disappointed with its efficacy. Um, how effective is curcumin for osteoarthritis of the knee? So it's been studied actually in a lot of randomized controlled trials. Uh, in January of 2021, a systematic review was published, found 16 trials comparing curcumin to either placebo or an active control, which is typically an NSAID. In these 16 trials, you got a total of 1,800 patients, and uh, you know this is starting to constitute a sizable evidence base. And f the trials are all fairly consistent. There are varying degrees of um, rigor in terms of how well they're done, but they generally show that curcumin is better than placebo for relieving pain and is comparable to NSAIDs. So when you have curcumin versus NSAID, you generally get no difference in outcomes. And if you have curcumin versus placebo, curcumin turns out to be better. As I mentioned, many of the trials had methodologic flaws. And so people have been skeptical about the data. And this is not surprising. This is how the glucosamine chondroitin uh, business got going because of poorly done studies that then get a lot of hype. In December of 2020, there was a double-blind randomized trial published in the Annals of Internal Medicine that compared curcumin to placebo. 
And this trial had 70 participants, so it's a modest size. It's not small, but it's not a large study. But all of them, this was done as a much more rigorous study. And all the patients not only had symptomatic knee OA, but they had an effusion and synovitis as defined by ultrasound. And the patients were given the treatment twice a day for 12 weeks. And at the end of the 12 weeks, the group given curcumin reported less pain than the placebo group. However, there was no difference in the effusion. And they also did MRIs and they looked at the cartilage and there was no difference of the cartilage around, as part of the knee joint. So the data seems consistent. It helps with symptoms, but uh, it, you know, it's not altering the course of the disease. Well, but, and by the same token, neither do corticosteroid injections or oral NSAIDs. So it's That's at absolutely least, right. At least as effective as as the other current methods that we use to treat this short of surgery. So curcumin, uh, side effects. So in the studies, it's generally well tolerated. The side effects are typ typically comparable to placebo and actually less than NSAIDs in these studies. The most commonly reported side effects are GI in nature, and that can range from constipation, diarrhea, bloating, reflux, uh, some dyspepsia or some nausea. It can make your stool turn yellow. Um, some people note an aftertaste after uh, consuming curcumin. Probably the biggest concern has been reports that curcumin has antiplatelet and anticoagulant properties. It can increase your pro-time, your activated PTT. It can inhibit thrombin and factor uh, 10A. Therefore, it should be used with caution if patients are already on anticoagulants or antiplatelet agents. Interestingly, I came across a, uh, an argument, I, I guess it was more of an editorial or an essay in a journal out of India that was suggesting that curcumin be used for the coagulopathy of COVID-19 because of these anticoagulant properties if somebody wanted to have sort of a natural treatment. Although I'm not endorsing that, I just found it interesting. <laughs> Oh, boy, everything relates back to COVID. Well, interesting. Um, I, I mean, I, I did not realize that it was as effective as oral NSAIDs, and oral NSAIDs cause GI side effects as well, although we don't really think they're terribly helpful with COVID-19. So, um, Bill, at this point, in addition to him starting to be more careful with his weight, um, do some rehab work, how would you recommend Bill uh, start using this supplement? You know, it's funny. I had a patient uh, not too long ago I saw who, very similar to Bill, came in uh, and was looking for something. And it was clear that, you know, standard treatments already been tried and failed. And so I said to him, would you be interested in an herbal treatment? Here, Bill already is. So we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. But the patient uh, said yes. And so when I mentioned curcumin and uh, the Boswellia serrata, uh, the first thing he said was, I'm already on all of those. And yeah. so, you know, this is a reminder. Patients don't always tell us about things. They're they're trying these. I, I will often speak in uh, lectures around uh, osteoarthritis and herbal therapies for them. And I will tell you that curcumin has got to be the number one thing people are using these days. So I would uh, be free to offer that to Bill. I would also, however, reinforce what I started with at the beginning, the importance of appropriate exercises around the knee joint to strengthen the muscles and uh, and to work on weight loss. And so I think if we do those things, is it reasonable to use an herbal supplement as well? Yes, and I think curcumin's got the best evidence base, but there are others that could be tried um, if, if that was either ineffective or uh, had side effects that couldn't be tolerated. And how would you recommend, how much would he, should he take? Or yeah, so that's a great question, Frank. When you look at the data, I'd mentioned these randomized trials, the dosing used has ranged from about two grams a day to 10 grams a day. And there is concern at the higher doses that uh, it could have more side effects. So I would start them on something in the neighborhood of, of, of you know, one to two grams a day, just see how he tolerates it. And it's usually split dosage, take it twice a day. Um, and, you know, again, you go to any supermarket that's got a, a supplement section or any uh, pharmacy and you will have no trouble finding curcumin extract so uh, you know start start just like anything else start at a low dose if a low dose is effective you don't need to keep increasing um and that would be my advice 
All right, great. Well, thank you. This is this is very um, engaging, and personally, uh, I'll have to give this some thought myself because um, I am working hard on weight loss and I rehab all the time. Alan, thanks again. Thanks for having me, Frank. Practice pointer: Curcumin twice a day can help with symptoms of osteoarthritis of the knee. Join us next time when we discuss the HPV vaccine and a simple tool to help you improve your efficiency in having patients take it.